Hi, my name is Emma Irvin. For those of you who don't know me or don't know about our business, uh, we are My Seaside Luxury. Um, this presentation is to show those of you who are interested what we are proposing for Albion House and um, what we've proposed to the um, Ramsgate Town Council and Ramsgate Society so far. <clears throat> when my husband comes from Kent, I'm Irish, and I came to Ramsgate first to see a project a property developer colleague of mine was finishing. He raved about the area. It's great employment, new potential em potential new employment, the Chinese gateway, the airport, Pfizer, etc. So I decided to have a look for myself. I landed in Gatwick, I drove down a little rented Fiesta, and as I got closer and closer, it dawned on me that the sky was actually brightening up, and if nothing else, I was going to have a nice day by the sea. I can't explain my absolute surprise when I turned the corner by Churchill's pub and saw the most beautiful expanse of blue sea in front of me. What my now rather popular colleague had not mentioned was the stunning sea views, the sandy beach, the Royal Harbour, and being an architect, frankly, he could have had me at just the incredible architecture which Ramsgate so modestly possesses. Six weeks later, we relocated my husband back to his job three days a week in London and we moved into a holiday let owned by our lovely now partner, Gay, and that was it. We lived in Ramsgate. Over the last two years, Gay, Ben and I have built up this business, My Seaside Luxury, our holiday let business. I can proudly say it is the pure joy of seeing the look of glee and surprise on so many new faces to Ramsgate, which gives us the confidence and belief needed to embark on this project. Albion House was built as a building in the round, except for one side which adjoins Albion Place. So I'm just going to zoom in here and show you what I mean by that. You can see here that the building, this one's probably the best, this is the main building and when it was built this is what was built. There was a billiard room in the back here um, but these two sections here are both added on since the original building which is this main one here was built. The map which I'll show you later also shows a garden and at the time it was a much narrower road than what we have today and obviously need today. On this William Frith painting on the left we can see Albion House in its original form, freestanding, something that you see from three sides. On this photo to the right we can see the building a little bit later but also we see all this beautiful character of the neighbouring buildings which has obviously been lost over time. Who knows, maybe one day this can be reversed. I think it's a good time just to mention the other ways this building could go. Potentially a block of flats, which we really don't need, or a private home. But wouldn't it be an enormous shame to see this building being broken up into more flats beyond the loss of opportunity for employment and tourism and you know inward investment the freehold being irreversibly broken up and even a private home if the freehold was one why should just one group of people be given the exclusive sole use of this treasured building of ours in Ramsgate the two pictures at the bottom here I think just sum up the whole idea of Ramsgate and I guess it just it's, it's about fun and being on the beach and enjoying the sun and just the simple pleasures of taking your holidays on the British seaside. So we've modelled the building um, really I guess to get a better understanding of how the building is working at the moment and help us to kind of find the best design solution moving forward with the building. We really love this kind of very strong iconic gable which I guess initially would have ended about there and when we've been looking at this in more and more detail it's kind of dawned on us that the symmetry and the lines of the building as it was originally are almost lost if not blurred by the presence of these two additions which is this one here and this one here so we decided to explore a second option which includes removing these so going back to the plan before we look at how it is appearing on the outside, what we're proposing is a 23 room hotel with a cafe bar at the front with all the sea views and the old fireplaces and really restoring this back to a kind of a former glory. So everything you see in yellow is the existing 
being retained and everything you see in white is completely new build in this proposal. On the top floor is a rooftop bar with a camera obscura and I'll come back to that when we get to that um, part of the proposal. The new chamber in here is in the exact same location, the exact same size as the existing chamber. We feel it's really important to keep this amenity in Ramsgate. I mean, really, it's giving it back because at the moment, obviously, the building is um, has a big question mark over it. Ramsgate really does need this conference area and banqueting area, even from you know the town council meetings where there isn't enough space to hold. Um, to, to have an, the, the amount of people who want to get involved in local decisions and this is somewhere where we feel would be a really high quality you know a completely new audio visual really good environment very important also having access lift access access to good toilet facilities um, and that's obviously a key um, issue for inclusion weddings are also a much needed source of expenditure from bringing money also bringing money from, from outside Ramsgate and obviously um, giving the local community the opportunity to get married in Albion House. I mean we have the sea, we have the harbour, we have this beautiful sandy beach and the stunning architectural backdrop to offer and we feel selling weddings here you know it's, it's not a hard sell it's it's all it's all there. Um, the new chamber will be set up for civil ceremony, so this arrangement can be changed so that you have people in lines and you can have your couple at the top here getting married in front of lovely sea views. And then once all that's done, they can go out to Albion Gardens, have their photos taken, come back in for a drinks reception in the bar, and then be greeted back to a completely transformed banqueting room. The cafe bar is a kind of meet and greet breakfast, lunch, dinner area, or just for coffee but all locally sourced Kent food. Then there's three floors of bedrooms above. Uh, the 23 rooms range from very luxurious, large Regency style suites with balconies looking out over the sea to the smaller, more modern rooms in the contemporary edition. So we feel that making that strong, clear division between what is new and what is part of the original building is a really strong, uh, I guess, conservation principle, which we should respect and which we should, you know, allow this building to stand on its own as it was originally designed. Sea views are obviously the key offering in a hotel in Ramsgate. And we are kind of amazed and excited about the fact that all these rooms, except for four, have this key factor, this stunning sea view out over the, the, the channel. Now for the rooftop bar. This is where there's a more kind of frameless, open uh, view of the sea uh, for guests of the hotel and visitors to the Camera Obscura. People can come up, have a chance to enjoy a drink. It's a quieter place for kind of, you know, relaxing contemplation and watching out over the sea. We think it's the most elevated uh, sea view where you can have a coffee or a drink, uh, what will be. Um, hopefully. Um, the Ramsgate Society has generously offered us a camera obscura which for those who know as little about this as I did when they um, first told me about it is a, a Victorian device which projects panoramic views of Ramsgate onto a screen in front of you um, and we think this is actually a really unique and potentially quite powerful attraction for tourists to come to Ramsgate and will generate lots of interest in the history of Ramsgate which we're all striving to tie together as a core attraction to this area. Also this plan shows a very um, strong visual break which is this kind of gap here um, between the kind of regal and opulent part of the building and the more minimal and contemporary and you know beautifully designed but simple uh, but equally also luxurious addition. The interiors of the contemporary edition as seen here uses, this, this image here on the right, uses light and natural materials which reflect the natural environment that they look out to. The interiors of Albion House are meticulously um, reinstated to the level of luxury that we can only imagine once um, existed in the main house. 
So you can see here that it's really going back to the kind of Victorian Regency um, style where it's, you know, antique furniture and very luxurious materials and, you know, kind of quite dark and cozy areas. So how this all kind of develops, this is really just kind of reference material um, for you to look at. Uh, equally, the outside of the building, the story is being told as honestly as possible. It's on one hand a very um, beautifully restored piece of strong, identifiable architecture alongside a, a more quiet or um, complementary, almost like a supporter of this kind of main event building. Um, there's an idea which has been put forward by Haptic which are a very up-and-coming, um, talented group of architects in London who have put this proposal together with us. Um, and they've come up with this idea of a living wall, which actually has, um, from everybody who we've spoken to so far, have really liked. And it's the kind of the idea that sometimes you see old buildings covered in ivy um, and this is kind of taking it to the next level. But it's, it's quite a interesting and delicate way, I think, of dealing with the materiality of this new edition and, and what that should actually look like. So these are just some images that you can see um, how these buildings actually look um, and you can kind of tone it down and make it a bit wilder and, you know, you can make it work with, with whatever it is you're trying to achieve. Um, this, this Here is the map. This just shows you my point about the building actually being de designed pretty much in the round on all three sides. That's the billiard room which was demolished, we believe, when the mayor's parlour was built. And obviously you can see here that, that the, the section there, which is the second part um, of the part which we'd like to remove, um, wasn't obviously there. And this is the 1849, so this is over 60 years after the building was built. This picture is just a bit of fun. This is a bit of kind of tongue-in-cheek architects put the new addition and the rooftop bar into the William Frith painting. Um, it's just a bit of a joke really to finish up on. But um, I just thought that uh, I would keep that in. Um, I guess finishing up, the one thing I would really like to get across, which I haven't talked about yet, and which is really a core idea of this um, whole project, is the proposal that it's it's not just a boutique hotel, it's a boutique training hotel. and. An everyday hotel of this size could employ maybe 15, 30 people at, at the very busy periods of the year. But a training hotel is something very different. It's where you have fully paid staff which work alongside trainers, which work alongside trainees. So you essentially have a system like a mentoring system where you have new staff coming up through the ranks that maybe they're there six months and then somebody comes up in underneath them and you kind of, you know, encourage this culture of very, very high levels of service and training throughout your staff. Um, but also the idea is that we always have new people coming in, whether they're just doing a workshop on a Saturday morning or they're actually coming to work in the hotel. It's, it's essentially a structured program which we want to put together as part of the hotel. And as also, as you know, obviously there's a limit on how many people we can employ directly. But our idea is that we bring this offering to other boutique hotels, potentially chains, and we are then responsible for training staff, which are then recruited to other parts of Kent and maybe the UK. And the people who want these opportunities come forward, and we make it very easy for them to kind of get on the kind of work ladder and uh, come back to the workplace. It's a little bit like Jamie Oliver's 13 restaurant, but we want to do it in front of house maintenance, housekeeping, admin, and obviously the kitchen and the restaurant and the bar. Uh, I'm going to finish up on, I guess, what is a kind of core belief for us, and that is to use the resources that are around us. Um, and I guess the idea of this hotel came about from Albion House being empty, um, rather than us going out and looking for a building to build a hotel from. Um, but I was I just want to really say that we feel really strongly about this project and hope that you can be a resource of both feedback and input and advice and ultimately help this project to become a reality. 
So I'm going to finish there. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our presentation. I am available to speak to anybody who'd like to talk to me about it. Um, it's you know clearly a, a real passion for us. You can get in contact with us through myseasideluxury.co.uk. Um, if you want to go on there, you can contact us through the contact form on the website. Um, and obviously you'll find this on our Facebook page and we'd love you to um, get in touch with us, link in with us, whatever you would like to do. So I'd just like to thank you again and wish you well.